G'day, g'day, g'day. Subscribe to Wayne on Only Fools and SAFC. So is this criticism what he's been having? Is it justified? You know, there's been some horrors in there as well. You know, is he being played out of position? But for me, when he starts, his touch is terrible. He, he has a touch too many. Hello, how's everybody getting on? Hope you're all all right and having a good week. Uh, so welcome to another video on the channel. This time I just wanted to jump on and give uh, my thoughts on Christian Speakman being in the spotlight you know, over the past few weeks and none more so than last night after our disappointing exit the crew. Uh, so just wanted to give my thoughts on, you know, is the criticism justified? But first of all, just wanted to say a massive, massive congratulations to Chris Rigg. Um, this kid's going to be an absolute superstar in the future. Um, he played last night, played really, really well. And also, you know, I made history on two camps. He, all, he became the club's youngest ever goal scorer, 16 years and 51 days. Um, absolutely fantastic achievement. Um, and he also became the youngest ever goal scorer in the EFL Cup or EFL Draw or EFL Cup, you know, the Carabao Cup. So, you know, you know how many years that's been going. So, what an achievement that is, you know, the young lad. Absolutely fantastic. He's, uh, he's, he's going to have a big, big future. And even after his interview after the game last night, he, he kind of said, He's aiming to be a starter next season. Well, you know, young enough, uh, if you keep on playing the way you're playing, I think you'll be a starter in the first team before very much longer. So, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Um, so, so pleased that he signed a new contract to keep me uh, um, for the next couple of years. So, you know, big, big things on the horizon for Chris Riggs. So, you know, congratulations and fully deserved absolute superstar. But, on the... Uh, on to Christian Speakman, so is this criticism what he's been having? Is it justified? Uh, is it a bit unfair? Well, I've just been doing a little bit of digging into you know since he arrived at the club and he's transfer dealing. So I've got this the stats here. So he's actually signed 38 players since he took the job on. Um some bad ones and some good ones. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not gonna get every transfer, you know, spot on. There's gonna be some you know, rubbish along the way. But I've just been looking at his I've just kind of put them into kind of, a, of my order of his of his top kind of five, ten and his worst five. Um so obviously the 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 top sign he made for me was Ahmad Diallo, you know, crack and signing, carry us last season, absolutely fantastic. You know, what a what a coup that was to get him. So, you know, Ahmad Diallo would be my best signer for him. Then look at the likes of Jack Clark and Patty Roberts. You know, two great signings. They've done. You know, they've been revelations since they joined from the club. To join the club um, a couple of years ago. So again, great pieces of business. Um, also looking at the likes of Ross Stewart. You know, another fantastic signing was an unknown before he signed for us, and uh, he's gone into to great things. Dennis Serkin, uh, Alex Pritchard, Trey Hume, Dan Ballard. You know, and all them type of players have all done really, really well for the club. You know, they've been fantastic. They've, they've, they've made a difference to the first team, you know, and they made the difference for us last season. Now, one of the not so good, you know, there's been some horrors in there as well. Um, if you look at the likes of Jake Vaughans, I think we've gone over Southampton, who played three or four times. Jordan Jones, who was an absolute non-starter. Um, Frederick Alves, who I think got from West Ham again, played three or four games. And the likes of Leon de Jacky as well, who you know just didn't make it. So you know he's, he's had a bit of a mixed bag, I think. Um, you know, he, you know eight or nine or ten good signings out of that bunch. The rest of them are a bit hit or miss. If you look at the latest ones, you know, of this thing, Joby Bellingham probably stands out to be one of the best ones. But you've got the likes of Isaac Lahaji. Yes, we made money on them, which I suppose is is the ideal the idea behind the model is to buy them, develop them, and sell them on. Uh, I'm guessing reading between the lines, we've got quite a bit of money, saying so we've been linked with you know bidding millions of pounds for this this strike that might be coming in. So, but you know, did he really have an impact on the side? Not for me. Um, even now, even the current ones, I might get some flack for this, but the likes of Jefferson Bennett, Abdullah Bar. Now, for me, from what I've seen of them, they're not going to make it. You know, I, do, I, I just can't see them making it in the championship, in our team. You know, I know they're only young boys. And I know they haven't had much football and Tony Moore kept on going about getting them embedded in the club and settling, settling them in. But they've been here a while now and every time they've played, for me, they haven't stood out. You know, 
Abdullah Bar in particular, he loses the ball too often. So, you know, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below about that one. But I just think for me, the likes of Jefferson Bennett, I like the kid. You know, he's full of endeavour. He always tries his heart out. But for me, again, I'm not convinced he's going to make it. Um, obviously, we don't know about Eliza Meander, Nathan Bishop. We haven't really seen too much of them in great detail. Um, Bradley Dack will be a, f a fantastic sign if we keep him fit. Um, and the likes of Samedo as well. Again, another one that we're not too sure about, you know. He looks decent in pre-season. Going to take time, but we we'll need somebody to play alongside him. Um, so, is is the is the criticism justified? Well, I think, in a way, yes, it is, because I think you know we've had you know two, possibly three windows now to address this striker situation, and it's worrying. It really is worrying at the minute because it, it, the the rumours behind the scenes. I don't know whether you've seen Nick Barnes put out a, a podcast. On um on total sport last night about behind the scenes, he's worried about how things are going. Apparently, Tony Mowbray isn't happy still about what happened in the close season about the club going behind his back and speaking to a young manager, potentially for a takeover. You know whether that was true or not, but you know there must be something. And Nick Barnes has got a good insight in, into the club behind the scenes, and for him to come out and say that on total sport is a worrying sign. Last night, an hour and twenty minutes after the game. Before Tony Mowbray came out to give his interview, you know, we were all feared the worst. There was rumours flying about he'd resigned, he'd, he'd gone, he'd, he'd walked away. And to be honest with you, this just stinks of, of the same kind of situation that Alex Neil found himself in. You know, he came in, had a great end of the season, got us promoted, didn't, the, the, the you know, Speakman and, and, and Core didn't give him what he wanted in the transfer market and he's walked away. The same thing's happening again. You know, Tony Mowbray's had a fantastic season last season. Now's the time to back him, give him some money to get the players that he wants, and we haven't done that. And now I think we're in danger of losing Tony Mowbray. And if that's the case, what happens? You know, the, the man's done a fantastic job at the club. What what we did last season was 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 no, was not, no, nothing short of a miracle. You know, we were expected to be fighting relegation, took us to the playoffs. It was why I went up backing him. Yes, we're getting Bradley Dak, but. That's a one-off for me. You know, we'll keep on signing the young players. The team is crying out for experience. We need some experience players. We need two centre forwards, and we need one at least one centre forward with experience at this level. Who knows where the net is now? We're now we've been linked with Tom Cannon again. A dear, is he going to be the answer? I didn't know, but surely other teams have managed to go out and get strikers. Why haven't we? The simple fact is because we're not prepared to pay the money, and that's a worrying sign. Now for me, does does that mean KLD doesn't have the money? You know, is Speakman the big influence in there, or is he dictated to by KLD's budget? I don't know. So it could be a case of Speakman's the scapegoat for KLD. But you know, something needs to change, and we need to get to the bottom of, of why we're struggling to sign experienced players. Yes, the model I agree with it in principle, but you've still got to have that 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 balance of experience and Tony Morby has been crying out in his interviews every interview he's done even in pre-season about needing experience at the top end of the pitch needing experienced players and it's fell on deaf ears because it's not happened and again when he's come out I think he came come out with the day and said we haven't got vast amount of money to spend so we might end up with a third or fourth, fourth choice striker that to me again is one and sign so you know it's frustrating I've gone hand in hand with losing the first two games it's uh, it's it's worrying you know, so it needs to be sorted out. You know, if it is KLD and he hasn't got the money, he needs to sell or he needs, you know, he needs to do something about it. Um, but it, it needs sorting out now before we, do, if we lose Tony Mowbray. It, it is going to happen. You know, he is going to walk away. We're going to be in the same boat as we were with Alex Neil. Back to square one. This season will be ruined. So come on, you know, let's get it sorted out. It needs sorting out now. You know, Tony Mowbray is the man for the job, but he needs backing before we lose them so you know let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below uh you know do you agree but for me the criticism at the moment at this moment in time is justified we've had two or three windows out to put this uh this striker situation correct others other teams are doing it we are not but let me know what you think in the, in the comments below please like share and subscribe if you don't mind it'd be greatly appreciated there'll be a match preview coming out for the Preston game at the weekend where hopefully you know we can put this bad start of the season correct but until the next one thanks for watching take it easy stay safe and we'll speak soon Ta -ra.